Well, for the for the folks on the phone today, thank you for joining. My name is Rob Cook. I am with a company called KE Commerce, and we are a we are a ISV in the Acumatica space. Uh, what we're here to talk about today is really to give an educational overview of e-commerce and what it means here in 2023 going into 2024. So beyond the basics. And what I mean by that is typically when someone says the word e-commerce, the knee-jerk reaction to e-commerce is always retail. It's Amazon selling to the general public. But in reality, this industry has shifted in the background over the last 10 years significantly to grow and grow in the B2B space. And that's what we're here to talk about today. As I had mentioned, my name is Rob Cook. I am a business development manager here at KE Commerce. I have been in this industry for going on 15 years. Um, joined with me is Patrick Fuzzarini, who is a, uh, is, a, is a technical consultant, who together with myself, we work with all of our customers to help them to see if we have a good fit with our solution and our business to see if we can become an e-commerce partner to someone rather than multiple vendors. And which is what you typically see out there in the ecosystem, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. The reason we're here in front of you today is because, as I mentioned, we, we are e-commerce experts. We've been doing this for over 20 years. Uh, on an annual basis, we're processing over $2 billion on behalf of our customers every single year. We have a team of over 170 people around the world, and we have over 1,500 live and active URLs uh, representing more than 700 businesses. Um, and all of those are integrated back into an account accounting system. Today, we're here to talk about uh, Acumatica, but we are an integrated e-commerce company is what we do. So enough about us. Let's talk about uh, the educational side of it. When we talk about uh, e-commerce, and as I mentioned, it's been changing in the background over the last five to 10 years. The big change has been B2B. B2B e-commerce sales will exceed $2 trillion dollars. Um, by 2024. This means that distribution, wholesale, and manufacturing, some of those transactions are going through an online portal or a full-blown e-commerce solution rather than the traditional means of calling an order in, meeting your sales rep on-prem, uh, emailing, faxing, if that's still a thing in certain industries, which I know it is. Now, when it comes to the growth of the B2B um, market, it's growing on a, a clip of over 20% every year. Over 65% of businesses have some type of B2B e-commerce solution, either homegrown uh, or they've taken a solution that's typically not meant to do B2B and they're trying to do B2B. But more than 35% say they are willing to, they, these are end users, are willing to spend over half a million dollars on transactions online. Now, what this means is we're providing a platform to the end user that makes it easier for them to do business with you, the merchant. That is, at the end of the day, what B2B e-commerce is. Now, next slide. How it differentiates is, is a few different things. So the, these pain points, Pain points of B2B buyers are typically um, the pain points you see by trying to do B2B transactions with a B2C environment. What I mean by this is Shopify, Big Commerce, WooCommerce, uh, a lot of these XYZ commerce stores that are out there, they were originally built to be B2C environments. They're free, they're freeware. They give the software away for free, build people up on their store and take a percentage of sales, or they make their money on the credit card processing in the back end. Now, over the years, they've tried to bring on a lot of B2B e-commerce solution or e-commerce functionalities. But at the end of the day, those e-commerce functionalities and they really the raw data, the raw data sits in back in office in your ERP system, Acumatica. So having accurate pricing and shipping options for B2B, every single one of your customers could have a different price. Every single one of your customers could have a different shipping option based on where they are locationally in the world. So pulling that information in from an ERP, for example, is something that makes it easy. Uh, checkout, having a one-page checkout or a mobile-first checkout. Having real-time inventory. Here's what we have to sell you, Mr. Customer, and it's accurate. It's talking back to my system right now, real-time. Uh, loading that website instantly, not having your customer sit there and waiting, being able to do that on any device. Uh, having that search functionality be 
clear, concise, that UI, that UX. They want to do it on a cell phone, great. They want to do it on a laptop, great. Full-blown computer, even better, right? Put them in a solution that's going to work no matter what and how they're accessing it. Uh, data privacy. The information that I put into my site, we need to make sure that's uh, encrypted and secure. Fast forwarding, talking about PCI compliance with credit card information, even bigger. Uh, support. If I have a question, can I live chat someone? Can I fill out a form? Can I do that on the website, right? Um, flexibility of discounting. So promo codes, automatic discounts, um, unit of measure discounts, uh, customer specific pricing discounts. And then obviously lack of payment or, or lack of payment or multiple payment options. Maybe I have certain customers I can bill on account. I have other customers that eh, they're not really good at paying their AR. And then I have other customers, which we want to give both options to. So these are all the things that, that really make a B2B e-commerce solution different than a B2C solution. Now, if you are looking for an e a B2B e-commerce solution, here's a few of the things you should really focus on. Uh, number one, as I've kind of hit home already, B2B is different than B2C. Not every solution can do B2B functionality, specifically when you're talking about showing different things to different clients based off of a login. In, in layman's terms, that's what it means. Uh, number two is selecting a solution with a solid B2B feature set. So uh, what I mean by that is, is quick order functionality. B2C, it's very, it's very driven by an emotional you know, response. Here's very heavy marketing. I'm going to get down to a product. I'm going to heavily discount it and then get them the place to order. B2B, they know what they want. They want to come in. They want to be able to do it, do it accurately and do it quickly ordering off of an old order, ordering off of a frequently ordered products list, ordering off of a quick order entry, part number quantity, uploading spreadsheets, things like that. Um, number three is make sure that you select a solution that has many different integrations, Acumatica being one of them. Uh, a lot of the information that you're managing for your business on a day-to-day -day basis, it's coming from the ERP. So your products, your customers, your, your inventory, your pricing, et cetera. Make sure that that's being pulled and also there's integrations to third parties like UPS and FedEx and Amazon and eBay and all these things um, and all these integrations really boil up to a solution that allows you to be able to um, have a partner rather than multiple vendors. When you get into multiple vendor situations, you typically have an issue with upgrading, you have an issue with support. These are the things that you should be looking for. Um, number four is automate. You know, um, how do we, how do we automate this to your order to cash process? You need to find a solution that is going to align with your back office processes. So, um, and I forgot to mention at the beginning, if there are any questions, feel free to type them in the questions. Uh, we will get to them towards the end here. We will have some uh, time left over. Next slide, please. So, there's this belief that the same e-commerce strategies used in business to consumer e-commerce can be used in B2B e-commerce. And I think the reality of the matter is that they're more different than they are similar, right? In one sense, you're talking about a student buying a pair of sneakers. And in the other sense, maybe you're talking about a textile distributor selling fabrics to a clothing manufacturer, right? When goods are sold to the consumer, everybody has the same buying options. And often that customer will only buy one time. So with that in mind, the focus of B2C e-commerce is what Rob was saying. It's often emotionally driven with lots of tools to sort of grab your attention. Um, an analogy here might be, it's like finding the lone gazelle in the herd and striking quickly right away. And in some sorts, comparing to the hunt, uh, B2B e-commerce focuses on the farming mentality. The focus should be on the individual relationships held with these businesses or your customers because they might qualify for different pricing options. They might have different payment terms and they might have a ton of historical information that they need to have access to back office. And so as a result, order sizes in the B2B space are normally much larger. They're, they take a bit longer to uh, create uh, because it's more thought out and the overall experience must be more personalized since it's primarily a returning customer base in that B2B space. They're buying more than one time. 
So now that we know that the road to get to our destination is different in the B2B world, the question becomes, how do we get there? Right? What tools will make this journey easier? And the products that you should be offering your customers should be pertinent specifically to them. A classic example of this is one that Rob and I often come across. A business is selling large industrial machinery and they want to make sure that their customer only is able to purchase the replacement parts for that specific machine that they already own. So the only thing that they might be able to buy are the parts that fit that machine and there's never a mistake that can be made. So giving customers the ability to see their assigned price, their assigned products, as well as any tax criteria that might fall in uh, to play for them is crucial. And one of the biggest return on investments can be self-service. We've seen a few presentations already talking about this over uh, the, the, uh, the, the couple of days. And giving your customers the visibility into uh, history and statuses of old orders really boils down into less phone calls that you might receive, less emails, and less misinterpretations. I was actually speaking to a manufacturer just last week who regularly had to send emails to their resellers with the price lists that that re reseller should be receiving. Because the reseller needed this so that they could properly mark up their own price upon selling it to the end consumer. And just like that, having a tool that lets the reseller log in themselves and download their own price list saves a ton of time from emailing back and forth. Now, when it comes to general purchasing habits uh, or efficient purchasing habits, your customers do business with you all the time in the B2B space and their busy day shouldn't get any busier because they have to order some, some goods. They want to know whether a product is in inventory, uh, whether it's on back order or whether it's discontinued. And we talked earlier about how B2B buying is normally a little bit more logical and less emotionally driven. So the tools that let customers purchase need to follow that same idea, right? Giving customers an option to uh, quickly order hundreds of line items at a time, maybe by importing a list, is a logical need. Being able to reorder the same items over and over and over again off of a past order is another one. And finally, as much as we want to talk uh, about self-service being the most important piece here, um, businesses have other, other tasks that they really need to focus on. And at times, we're still going to need to help our customers out. I would say that probably about 75% of the businesses that we speak to say that they would like a tool that lets their internal team help service their customers. So if somebody calls in, needing help to buy the right replacement part for them, we can assist. If a sales rep is at a show floor and they want to place an order on behalf of a customer because they're doing business in that moment, it should be doable. So I mentioned earlier that we need to find a solution that's gonna follow the order of the cash process. So when we're looking at an e-commerce solution, it can really touch on most of your internal processes. Number one, quotes. Can the e-commerce solution initiate a quote from a customer? Can it place an order on behalf of the customer into the ERP, uh, into Acumatica? Can it follow that order as it goes from staging to, to processing to fulfilled? Can it pull back the invoice that was created off of the order that was sent over to Acumatica? Can it transparent, transparent can it show the, uh, <laughs> the tracking information and give that transparency from that invoice online? Can it send automated emails to customers, letting them know that their e-commerce or their orders have shipped? Can it show any and all orders, not just the ones that were initiated off of the e-commerce store online? Can it allow them to initiate a return online? Can it allow them to place a payment online? Can it allow them to, uh, to see and have the ability to automate pre-authorizations and post-authorizations from those payments automatically based on things happening back office. That's what I mean by following the order to cash process with an e-commerce solution. It's not one that's disjointed from your back office accounting system in Acumatica. It's one that's bolted right onto it. It's one that gives you those functionalities. Next slide. So as you've been listening so far, uh, you might have realized that more data in a platform can potentially mean that it's harder to maintain. 
think of all the moving parts that we've been talking about, right? Price lists that, that are changing per customer, inventory levels that are always being updated, and order statuses, just to name a few. So I would argue that uh, integrating your e-commerce platform directly to Acumatica is the only way to truly take advantage of all the B2B specific features that we've been talking about. And there are many ways to integrate data between two systems, as I'm sure many of us here today know. Um, now, one way that we believe uh, works particularly well is through the synchronization of data. Essentially, it refers to keeping a separate copy of all the Acumatica data needed to run an e-commerce platform uh, in a cloud and synchronizing any changes that might occur between these two copies uh, to the correct environment. And what I mean by that is, let's say a price or an inventory level is changed within Acumatica. Well, that price is automatically changed on your online store. And similarly, let's say a customer orders or creates a new order online. Well, then that order should be created within Acumatica so that the two data sets are always identical. Now, this strategy means that the e-commerce platform can run much faster because it doesn't have to ask Acumatica for data whenever, data whenever a new event occurs. So the example I often use is that let's say a customer searches uh, for something that gives 100 results on the website, 100 products show up on the screen. Now, asking Acumatica for pricing might trigger an event that needs to go get 100 prices from Acumatica. And that's ignoring the fact that there's also inventory that needs to be retrieved, item details, images, and so on and so forth. Right, so that's 100 prices because one customer did one search. Now expand that out to let's say 100 customers who all have different prices. All of a sudden, just for prices, you're looking at probably 10,000 prices that need to be retrieved. Right, with a synchronization of data, um, the data needed is already available on the online store. So nothing needs to be retrieved from Acumatica when that customer loads that page and makes that search. So just to piggyback off of what Patrick was saying there was, it's all about scalability, right? Having that information for your customers quickly, accurately, and not having to go back and ping Acumatica every time. Right. We already have that information. We can show it to them right now. We're not going to hold the website up and make it think for a price or think for a quantity. It's going to be on there as soon as they log in. So just final thoughts. Uh, what we've seen over the years is B2B buyers want streamlined processes, personalized uh, experiences, and a customer-facing platform that is that is theirs, that makes their life easier. It makes it easier for them to do business with you. Um, don't settle for a basic B2C environment that has you know, bolt-ons to give it B2B functionality. You need a B2B first, web first, um, cell phone first type of solution that's bolted right down to Acumatica. That is really the only true way to do B2B e-commerce in today's world. Um, if anyone has any questions, I know we do have a couple minutes here. We can get those answered right now. And then also please stop over to our uh, our booth here. We are giving away a $250 Amazon gift card for anyone that comes in and fills out a poll. Um, and yeah, thank you for your time. We appreciate uh, everyone's attention. And uh, if there's any questions, uh, if anyone could read those out. Is there any in chat? I doesn't look like there's any right now. see any, okay. Well, if anyone has one, we still, we'll hang out here for a couple more minutes. Yeah. And we'll get those answered. If not, we look forward to seeing you guys at our booth. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Rob. I'll catch you guys later. Just um, I'll uh, message you guys um, my email contact info so we can connect. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Perfect. I'll see you later. Thanks, Chris. So yeah, uh, Michael, I just saw your question. Yes, if you process an order directly in Acumatica, your customer will be able to see it on the portal. It shows any and all orders coming out of the ERP. Um, so essentially, day one, they could go back and see an invoice from or an order from five years ago if they wanted to. I think uh, just maybe to add to that, um, I think it's important to realize that the B2B portal is designed to give your customers a whole view of, of their business with you. And it's not just about seeing their, the orders that they place online. And so with that philosophy or that mindset, of course, they should be able to see everything that they're doing with you. If that includes orders that were 
manually typed or came from another channel, whatever it may be, EDI, it'll still be visible on the website for them to log in and view at any point in time and reorder off of actually. Yep. And it actually, our, our solution specifically is quite unique in the fact that it combines e-commerce and a lot of the other, you know, portals that you see out in the ad Acumatica industry in one. So yeah, they'll get all those portal features, but they'll also be able to do that ordering and do the quick ordering. And don't get me wrong, we do B2C or direct to consumer websites. It's just the easier thing to do. It's one price list and it's one quantity and it's one checkout term, which is pay up front. So, uh, but the uniqueness is we can automatically integrate it back into to Acumatica and yeah. follow the order and invoice process, cash to order to cash process. Thanks for your question, Michael. All right. I think we have come to the end of our time. I look forward to uh, talking and chatting with anyone over at our booth. And thank you again for everyone's time today. Have a good rest of your conference.